Now to the big time. This is boxing. This is top rank. Presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Mr. Bob Arum. Sponsored by Boost Mobile. Power is money. And Top Gun Maverick. Starring Tom Cruise only in theaters May 27th. It's scheduled for 12 rounds for the WBO. WBC Ring Magazine Junior Lightweight Championships of the World. Here he is presented in association with Antonio Leonard Promotions, the 2016 Olympic silver medalist, the two-weight world champion, the reigning defending WBO champion of the world, representing Brick City, Newark, New Jersey, Shakur Stevenson. What happened there? Did this motherfucker wait? Oh, 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 there you go. I, your son may seem right. My man gonna have to get a haircut. I like that. Why don't more promoters use that? You know, that's so professional. One thirty. Okay, zero, all right, he made the wait. For the WBO that was a little scary. He made the wait. All right. He is a two-weight world champion. He is the reigning defending WBC champion of the world. Don't know. What the hell is wrong with you? Jesus. Mexico, Fucking degenerates. Is 129.6. 129.6 for Valdez. 129.6. So I'm going to have to sign into um, ESPN Plus so we can watch. The weigh-in interviews, post uh, weigh-in interviews from uh, Stevenson and Valdez. And if you want to see them individually, this is on ESPN2 right now live. So this weigh-in is a part of the episode of Max Unboxing. Well, even though he's fairly new to the 130 pound division, he's already been talking about moving up to 135. I think he'll settle in at 147 one day as he gets older. But first, he got to make it through tomorrow night. I'm not confident because he hasn't really, you know, I mean, yeah, Herring. OK, all right. You know, no disrespect to Jamel Herring, but, you know, I never really rated him as like a highly special talent. In my opinion, Valdez has a much uh, better chance. I'm pretty sure there is a Vada testing, but I don't know for sure. And especially for um, Valdez, he's probably getting tested more than anybody. That Fentamine T. Shakur was 24 believed Shakur's claim when you say that you mean other fighters around the sport fight fans what do you mean by that no this fight is personal just for the fact that you know you know every fight for me is very important in the fact that people were thinking that I was scared of fighting anybody it just turned personal to me because I've never I've never feared no any fighter out there I've been fighting inside and out and outside the ring ever since I was a little kid and I would never be afraid of fighting nobody so I'm here now and I'm just excited to step in the ring April 30th Shakur, obviously, you know, it's not the toughest fighter who wins, but it's the smartest, toughest fighter, right, who wins. And no one doubts your boxing skills. Oscar can box, obviously, if he's watched the Brichelt fight. But most boxing observers believe that to win, he's going to have to test your toughness. How do you respond to that, that Oscar will test your toughness? I'm prepared for whatever he brings. Um, I train eight weeks. Uh, I'm in shape. And whatever he want to bring, he could bring. I'm ready. I'm ready. I can't wait for this fight tomorrow, and I'm ready to show out. Is that something that you're looking forward to, getting in the ring with the best professional fighter you have yet met? 
to see what level you can take yourself to, or do you view Oscar Valdez as just another opponent? We never know till we get in the ring. You never know how good Oscar is until you get in the ring with him. Um, you don't know how good a fight is until you get in the ring with him. So we'll see tomorrow. Are you hoping, obviously you're both hoping for sensational performances, are you hoping to stop Oscar Valdez to make a statement? If he make a mistake, I'm going to capitalize on it. So uh, whatever, the, if the fight got to go 12 rounds, it got to go 12 rounds. If he make a mistake, uh, just don't be surprised if I get him out of there too. If you what to? If I get him out of there. If you get him out of there. And Oscar, from your point of view, usually you are a boxer puncher. Um, and Shakur is seen as more of a pure boxer usually in those kind of matchups the feeling is the boxer puncher is going to have to hurt the boxer is that how you I interviewed Jay fight? Prince well, like four years ago about Shakur Stevenson every time I step in the ring I always promise my fans that I will never promise anybody a knockout he's the manager what I will promise always is every time I step in the ring I will leave everything inside there my heart my guts my sweat my everything um I would always leave it inside the ring. So that's what I'm planning to do. You know, we know Shakur Stevens is a tough fighter. We know he's that he's a he's a great fighter. But I rise with the competition as well, and that's what we plan to do. Is this redemption for you in some way coming off a sensational career best performance against Burchelt? You're on top of the world. And then what you've been through since that fight, do you see this fight as possible redemption for you in boxing circles? Absolutely. Absolutely, but I'm extremely focused. Um, what's what I have in front of me what's done what was done in the past including the Berchet fight including the Conte South fight and all the other fights that I've had that were great You know that's in the past right now. I'm very focused on the main object for this fight Shakur I saw you guys staring each other down the other day and you said you got to crack the code What does that mean? I mean he got to go in there and crack the code. I feel like he never been in there with a fighter like me Um, Mr. Cole he got to crack he got to be able to crack the defense the the offense, the skill set of Shakur Stevenson, and we're going to see if he can do it tomorrow. Tim Bradley and I have been talking, Shakur, about what a fight like this can mean for either one of you guys should you win. In Tim Bradley's case against Devin Alexander, a fight similar in the sense that two undefeated fighters fighting to see who the guy was at 140 back then. But Tim Bradley didn't emerge a star from that fight, really, or a superstar, because the fight itself wasn't that exciting. Devin Alexander didn't really fight the way people were hoping. On the other hand, Floyd Mayweather in this weight division, and Diego Corrales linked up to unify the titles 21 years ago, and Floyd emerged a star because of his sensational performance. I'll start with you, Shakur. What do you have to do? to be a superstar when this fight is over? Perform how I performed my last fight and the fights previous, previous to that. I feel like um, if I look like me and have fun, uh, I'm going to become a superstar. I feel like I'm going to stay myself and be natural, be Shakur, um, box, hit, don't get hit. And that's my game plan, and I can't wait to execute it. Oscar, what about you? Well, for me, like I said before, we know we know Shakur is a, is a tough fighter. He's a he's a two-time world champion. So obviously, me winning this fight will definitely put me in a, in a closer position that I've always dreamed of is to be one of the top list of pound for pound and being a list of being reckoned as one of the, the great Mexican fighters. So definitely, winning this will put will put me in a higher step. So I'm very excited for this. This is my moment, and I'm ready for whatever. Oscar Valdez, Shakur Stevenson, thank you for joining me. Thank you for fighting each other. These are the kind of fights that boxing needs. Two top undefeated fighters stepping in there to see who the very best in the world is. Can't wait to see this thing tomorrow night. Thanks, guys. We've all been there. All of a sudden. All right. So uh, I have Shakur Stevenson. Uh, but I do believe this is going to, in, in a lot of people's minds, you know, and it should be the toughest fight of his career. However, I'm not confident that Shakur Stevenson will dominate. Something in my gut is telling me he's going to get cracked. And then, you know, he's going to pull out his nice, shiny new bike. But I do, you know, fights are not supposed to be easy. And if you're comparing him to Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather didn't have a lot of easy fights. And, you know, um, um, he was in tough fights, you know, where he really had to shine. And this is supposed to be that passing of the torch fight for Shakur Stevenson. For example, look at a guy like Devin Haney. 
Um, Devin Haney was supposed to really shine against Yorkis Gamboa. He was supposed to put a boot in his ass. He was supposed to really shine against Jorge, Jorge Linares. He was supposed to put a boot in his ass, but then he got cracked. He was supposed to really shine against Jojo Diaz. This is that fight for Sakura Stevenson where it's like, okay, listen, you know, classic Mexican pressure fighting power puncher with a high KO percentage undefeated versus the classic mover boxer, highly skilled African-American fighter. You know, he's supposed to shine. Now, a lot of people feel that Shakur Stevenson is going to box and play keep away. You know, after all, he doesn't have really the most alluring knockout percentage, even though, you know, we, we see that he can do it. Well, my issue with Shakur Stevenson sometimes is, you know, you always wanted him to really step on the gas. You see what I'm saying? You know, you always wanted him to really go that extra gear, but some fighters aren't like that. But overall, skill, like skill-wise, like, dude is good. Looking at the resume, this uh, Jeremiah Nakathila fight has aged. It's going to age pretty well. I mean, look what he did to Miguel Burchell. You know, but the only real notable fights he's had, and remember, he's only 24. So, you know, this is the type of fight that, you know, if it was on other promotional outlets, it could, they would have made this shit pay-per-view. So, and that's why the undercard is pretty lackluster. So, Jamel Herring, okay. Jeremiah Nakathila, quality wins. You know, Joette Gonzalez, quality wins. Christopher Diaz, so that's four nice, solid, quality wins. This is a two-division champion, 126 and uh, now 130. 30 and 0 with 23 KOs, 31 years old. You know, Robinson Contacao, Robinson Contacao. You could say, when I first heard about that fight, first thing I was seeing was people was like, yo, this is an underrated good fight. Valdez could possibly lose. And a lot of people may feel that he have lost that fight. You see what I'm saying? But either way, you know, that's a big ass, that fight left a big ass question mark around him. Miguel Burchell, going into that fight, weren't a lot of people like, yo, Miguel Burchell was considered somewhat of a boogeyman. You know, but Valdez starched him, you know, and starched him bad. You know, I remember his girl being ringside and just looking at him just sleep. Let me see if I can pull up that image real quick. It was pretty iconic. Like he was just laying there and his girl. Here, let me see. Let me see if I can just pull it up real quick. Valdez, Burchell. I'll never forget that picture. Let me see if I can find it. Like, he was knocked the fuck out. I thought it would be, like, right here. Look, he looked ass up, face down. He was fucked up. I'm looking for the picture where you had, like, his girl, like, screaming in the ring. Like, what the fuck? Get, get up. Get up from there. Can't find it. But anyway, overall, going back to... um. You know, quality fights for him, Contacao, Miguel Burchell, Scott Quigg broke his jaws, Savania, Miguel Mariaga, Shakira Stevenson was supposed to fight him um, a couple of years ago before uh, the country shut down, like literally the week the country shut down. Gradiovich, Chris Ovalos, you know, quality, quality wins. He's the more seasoned fighter, you know, and he's got the Canelo camp. You see what I'm saying? But overall, I just think that Shakur should be worried about the win. Even if he's got a stick and move, I don't think he wants... I understand fighters want to put on the show. That would be extra. But in this case, unify those titles. But also, the goal is they want to make him a star. This is about to be the fight that he's supposed to really, really shine. Looking at the division, you have um, Kenichi Ogawa, who's the IBF champion. He's supposed to be taking on Joe Cordina June um, 14th or so. Now, that fight right there is a fight that can happen. Cordina, a matchroom fighter. Ogawa's been fighting over at matchroom as well. Matchroom have been known to work with top rank most recently. The last fight they did together was, um, well, Fury versus White. That was a purse bid situation, you know, but um, uh, Mick Conlon fighting Lee Wood, getting knocked out. So even though that was a purse bids too, still, nonetheless, we've seen them even without purse bids work together. So... You know, um, we can possibly see the winner of Valdez Stevenson take on Kamichi Ogawa next. If they don't take on Ogawa next, then they got to fight this dude right here, Archie Sharp, who nobody wants to see. No disrespect to Archie Sharp. He's been talking shit, you know, trying to get his name in the mix. But he is the he is the mandatory for the winner. The winner has to fight him unless they go to unification round. 21-0 with nine KOs. You know, they call him the Sharp Shooter. Um, I've seen him fight. But I can't say, you know, that I can really tell you, you know, like his real style. But I'm going to tell you right now from what I've seen. 
you know, I don't see him uh, being able to uh, beat Shakira Stevenson. Roger Gutierrez was supposed to fight Chris Colbert, but didn't Gutierrez come down with COVID or something? And that was a purse bid fight. Hector Garcia ended up being a late step in and defeated Chris Colbert, be beating pretty bad. And now we have to see what's going to go on with Gutierrez, who's a Golden Boy fighter, by the way. And Golden Boy and Top Rank have also worked together in the past. So this is basically what I'm saying is, this is a division that can definitely have an undisputed champion by, I'm going to say, no later than this time next year. You know, if the winner of Valdez Stevenson goes on to fight Konichi Ogawa, if he beats Joe Cordina, let's say it's April right now, the end of April. Let's say sometime in September, August, September, November, we can see a three belt unification. And what's going on? Have we heard anything about a rematch clause between Valdez and Stevenson? Ronas, I don't know if Matt Rufus sent Ogawa over the top ring after what happened with Haney. And you're right, they probably want Ogawa to fight Joe Cordina. Yeah, but you know, but you got to think, though, we haven't seen anything yet, though. You know, I mean, we haven't seen them not work together. I mean, yeah, the Haney thing is kind of ugly. You know, because it's like, damn, he just, you know, went, you know, but I, I don't think that would have anything to do with it, really, my personal opinion. But at the same time, what the winner going to do? You're going to fight Archie Sharp? Or you're going to collect these two belts and then move up to 135? where you're in a long line right there at 135 to get a title shot. You see what I'm saying? Because 135 is stacked up. The mandatory is already set. Cambosos and Haney are already in two-fight deal, so, two deal, so that, that this year is already sewn up. So, you know, it's in the fighters, unless they're, having some, unless they're having some significant weight issues, it's in the best interest of Valdez and Stevenson to stay at 130, uh, 130 pounds. Now, they have to try to get, you know, Ogawa or Cordina, you know, and, you know, the, the Eddie Hearn matchroom top ring thing that does have some relevance, but I think that it can be done. Or they got to fight Archie Sharp. So you can't go from having this momentum against Stevenson Valdez down to Archie Sharp. No disrespect to him. Unless that's like the absolute last option. You know, it's like, listen, we wanted to keep our belts. We couldn't do anything. And Archie Sharp also is a uh, pro bellum fighter, by the way. So top ranking... Um, um, Bob Barham has pretty much went on the record to say he doesn't want to work with them because of their links to uh, Daniel Kennan, the alleged drug boxing kingpin. With that being said, um, I'm going to go get some dinner and start getting ready for tomorrow because we got a long, busy day in boxing. Luckily, if you don't know both of the cards, I got to fix my chat on screen. I don't know what's going on with that. Luckily, tomorrow, these cards will not overlap. Um... Shakura Stevenson and Oscar Valdez, that card starts at 10 p.m. Eastern. Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano are supposed to make their ring walks at 10.15 uh, p.m. Eastern. It's going to be a 7.30 p.m. Eastern start time for that card. So you'll be able to watch and enjoy both cards. Now, this, we haven't talked about the undercard. Um, the undercard is going to feature top rank on ESPN. The main fights on the main broadcast is going to feature Nico Ali Wall versus Alejandro Abera. That's going to open up the broadcast. By that, by the time that fight's over and they do all the father-son shit with Mark Kriegel and Muhammad Ali and all the Nico Ali Walsh filter, by the time that fight's over, um, Katie Taylor and, and uh, Serrano's going to be over. And then they're going to have Keyshawn Davis. He is the co-feature or chief supporter of the undercard taking on the Esteban Sanchez. And then the main event, Oscar Valdez versus Secure Stevenson. So overall, the undercard, I'm going to read the undercard to C-. minus. The card itself, because of Valdez Stevenson, I'm going to read it a B, B plus. The main event is an A. So I'm just, you know, grade it what you want. That's your opinion. You can grade it whatever you want. But me personally, these, you know, the the, the, Key, the Keyshawn Davis fight is not leading to no ranking. It's not leading to anything. It's a showcase fight. Nico Ali is a showcase fight. They're prospects. You know, so that all the money is at the top of the card. Makes sense because we're getting it on, you know, regular ESP and not pay-per-view. You know, makes sense. But nonetheless, we're going to be here tomorrow. You can expect me to be doing videos, post-fight videos on Valdez Stevenson, obviously. And then three fights on this card. Vargas Smith, Cruz Azern, Sel Darus, Taylor Serrano, maybe Austin Williams versus Cordell Booker. That's for ranking. You know, and I may cover Keyshawn Davis, Esteban Sanchez. Then after all of the fights are over, we're going to be here doing a live stream um, about an hour or so to cover the post-fight press conference for both of the fights. So it's gonna be busy. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe. Um, I'm gonna 
go get me some dinner, go walk the dog and start doing food prep. I'm making um, a whole bunch of chicken wings in the air fryer. And uh, yeah, we're going to be covering some boxing, man. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter at T-Street Controversy. The links to my social media are down below in the description box. Also here, I'm going to put my, I'm going to put it, the links to my social media in the chat. All right, there's my social media right there. Also, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the WBC app, powered by the Vive Network. They have an exclusive interview from Mike Tyson on there. You want to check out the links. To, the links is down below for Roku, Apple, Android, right down below in the description box. So I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. I may put out two more videos. Me and Big J got to do a video on uh, Jake Paul versus uh, Sonny Bill Williams. Also, I want to do a video on the... Um, I got two videos that I am doing before the fights tomorrow. The uh, Tank Davis versus Ruler Romero undercard has been set with Iris Lindy Lara versus Gary Spikel Sullivan. Yes, you heard that correctly. And then I want to do a video on uh, MTK and how that shit's just all falling apart. Take your time out. Please like the video. Subscribe. See you guys later on. Thanks for watching.